what I've already said. My own perspective is greatly influenced by my profound admiration for all that Rotary has done for disadvantaged and vulnerable children over all the years since the fled fledgling Chicago Club's first tentative program helping disadvantaged boys. Perhaps not surprisingly, it's also influenced by a special enthusiasm for what I see as the world's greatest scholarship and exchange programs for young people. Such differences between informed individual perspectives are, however, likely merely to reflect legitimate differences of personal emphasis and to be essentially unimportant. In contrast, and of real importance, is any significant disparity between the general public perception of Rotary and the true nature and worth of the organisation. For particularly in these days of spin and mass media, there can be a vast difference between public perception and true profile, between image and reality. I've often felt that good though the public perception of Rotary has always been, it has not, at least in the past 55 years, really done justice to the reality. For example, and in part answering a question that was asked of Jenny, far too few people outside the Rotary family have seemed to me to appreciate the extent of the contribution which Rotary has made to world understanding, decency, peace and goodwill through its massive promotion of world health, through the world's, as I've said, most important education and exchange programs, through its unique international fellowship, through its involvement in the establishment and functioning of important international agencies, including some United Nations instrumentalities, such as UNESCO, and through its work and financial contribution towards the alleviation of poverty and disadvantage, or for that matter, the full extent to which the approximately 1.3 million members of some 33,000 clubs make to the life, the welfare and the standards of the 207 countries and all the local communities which they serve. Any suggestion of personally blowing one's own trumpet has been anathema to all the great Rotarians whom I've known. That does not, however, mean that one should ignore or discount how important it is to the strength and appeal of Rotary that its public image fully and accurately reflects its vision and ideals and does something like justice to its worth and achievements. Let us say for two related and distinct reasons, at least. First, because public appreciation of the qualities of Rotary and the worth and extent of its achievements is important both to the sense of fulfilment and encouragement of Rotarians themselves <laughs> and to the attractiveness of the movement to desirable prospective Rotarians. Second, because that public appreciation is important in ensuring public support for the initiatives and programs which Rotary undertakes or endorses. It may well be that my personal impressions about the inadequacy of public perceptions are insufficiently informed and are mistaken. Be that as it may, it does seem to me that you may think it desirable 
from looking to the future and to the desirable model of Rotary in 2020, that significant attention be given to how best to ensure that that public perception fully and adequately reflects reality. I offer but one further thought in that regard. Last year, 2007, the centenary year of surf lifesaving was officially recognised by the Australian Government as the year of the surf lifesaver. This year, as quite a few of you know from your personal involvement, and I'm looking at John O'Neill in particular, this year, 2008, marks the centenary of scouting in Australia and has been officially designated as the Year of the Scout. As Surf Life Saving Australia's National Ambassador and as National President of Scouts Australia, I've been privileged to be very much involved in both celebrations. I mention them because it seems to me that in this country it's relevant in looking forward to 2020 to be conscious of the fact that 2021 here will hopefully be officially designated as the year of the Rotarian with all the possibilities that that involves. In that regard, I would specifically mention but three impressions which are formed as a result of my involvement in the centenary celebrations of the, those two other organisations. The first is that they have provided an extraordinary opportunity for development and renewal of both image and real identity on the national level. The second is that the experience of scouting would suggest that the approach that the real opportunities were provided by the centenary of Rotary itself in 2005 is likely to prove mistaken in this country. The centenary of scouting fell last year and was duly celebrated here and elsewhere in the scouting world. But my overwhelming impression has been that, perhaps a little parochially, it didn't have anything like a comparable impact on the members of the Australian scouting family or on the Australian public as this year's centenary of scouting in Australia has had. The last impression which I would mention is the importance of long-term planning. The year 2021, the centenary of Rotary in Australia, is a long way away, but so is 2020. Obviously, detailed planning for the centenary year of Rotary in Australia doesn't need to commence at once, but there needs to be an awareness of how long term the planning needs to be for such things as a centenary history, government designation of the year, a special coin or stamp issue, involvement of Rotary International and Rotarians from other countries, to mention some of the obvious things. Certainly, in looking to Rotary in 2020 in this country, you should be aware that that will be the eve of the centenary of Rotary in Australia. Let me turn to what, in the light of the past, I personally see as the true overall profile of Rotary.